there's actually no means we won't explore to try to get you to understand how something works. This is The Explainer, where I explain why issues are issues. Now, our explainee tonight is someone very familiar to you, fellow columnist at the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Patricia Vangilista. Welcome to the show again, Glad Pat. Glad to be here. Now, Pat, together with us uh, tonight are some students from the mm -hmm. University of the Philippines, and I believe they belong to an organization, so why don't we ask them what that organization is? Aisha, how about you tell us about your organization? All right. Um, good evening. Magandang gabi po. Uh, ang UP Lipunang Pangkasaysayan o UP Likas ay isang akademikong organisasyon sa UP Diliman na nag-aadhikang uh, mapagbuklod ang mga mag-aaral, nagpapakadalubhasa, may hilig at interes sa kasaysayan. Um, naglalayon ito na mapalawak at mapalaganap ang kaalaman at kamalayang pangkasaysayan. Mapaunlad din ang disiplina ng kasaysayan. At higit sa lahat, uh, mapaglingkuran ang mga mag-aaral ng pamantasan at ang sambayan ng Pilipino sa pamamagitan ng kritikal at mas makabuluhang pag-aaral ng kasaysayan at pagpupunyagi para sa pagbubuo ng inang bayan, uh, sambayanan at isang bansa. At ang mga miyembro ninyo ay mga, mga kumukuha ng uh, kasaysayan bilang uh, Ang karamihan po ay kumukuha ng kasaysayan uh, pero uh, we also accept uh, other uh, students from other disciplines. At paano nyo uh, pinapairal ang uh, kamulatan pagdating sa kalayaan? Meron ba kayong mga discussion groups? O... Uh, marami pong uh, ginagawa ang UP Likas. Meron po may mga DG or discussion groups nga po. Um, at meron po kaming yearly na national conference na dinadaluhan po ng mga studyante at, mag, uh, at mga teachers din from other, uh, other parts of the Philippines. Okay, great. So, I'm looking forward to your participation in it our It actually sounds tonight. like an organization yes. you should have belonged to, Manolo. <laughs> well, I, that's, I was very delinquent when I was in UP, so... We're, we're glad you're making up for it. it. Let's, uh, let's uh, invite our viewers to join in the discussion as well, Pat. Of course. If you want to join in the discussion, all you have to do is to text EX space react space your name backslash address backslash age backslash your question and send to 2366 for Globe and Sun and 231 for Smart. Or you can log on to www.v-explainer.com. Let's, let's begin with a little experiment. Now, Pat, mm -hmm. let me ask you and our guests here, and, and you, our viewers too, to try to look at an old picture with fresh eyes. Here's the old picture. It's behind us. It's a street scene. Now, Pat or our guests, can you tell me uh, where this was taken, for example? Can any of you take a guess? Uh, Manila? Yes, that's a good right. start. Uh, John Ray. What do you think? Where was this picture taken? Uh, <laughs> mm, I think it's in front of the Manila Post Office. <laughs> because that's, I, I can recognize the old Congress building which now stands as yeah. the National, Muse National Perfect. Museum. Perfect. So if you, if you look at this picture, um, you'll notice that this is P. Burgos actually in Manila. Mm -hmm. And uh, this structure here, if you, if you can see it on your screens, it's the tower of Manila City Hall being built. Uh, it's just a steel structure. And of course, here's the legislative building mm -hmm. where the National Museum is now. Now, I want to ask you what you can tell me about this scene. Um, and some, it's a little detail that sets it apart uh, from us today. We were looking at the same scene from the post office. And just to give you a clue, it involves the vehicles on the road. Hmm. Uh, we showed this picture to our audience earlier, and uh, they got it right away. Jean Ray, did you get it right away? Let's see how good a student you are. Come on up. Uh, the orientation of the vehicle seems different. Yes. Left-hand drive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If you're looking at the vehicles in this picture, if you notice on the, the, ro the routes they're taking, it's the opposite of what we follow today. People mm -hmm. were driving on the left side of the road. Um, that's a great observation. And no, we didn't give them the answer. They figured it out themselves. Congratulations. Now, we used to drive on the left side as most other Asians. In 2005, I got a letter from a reader named James Lytton. And I'd like to ask you, Pat, uh, to read part of it. Now, Lytton gives a detail about the destruction of the Jardin Botanico, or the old Manila Zoo. Pat? 
he said that some of the animals at the Hardin Botanico did not su- did not starve. Many escaped their cages, and at one time, the acacia trees of Isaac Peral, now UN Avenue, was full of monkeys that escaped from the old Manila Zoo. I know all this from personal knowledge, as I lived before and during the war in Isaac Peral Street. No, you know, if if, if that's uh, interesting, those of us who uh, don't have the means to engage in creative writing may not notice this point so much, but for those who, let's say, would want to write a story about that time, that's the sort of little detail that's not in the history books, but which brings back uh, an era back to life. So when we return, we're going to meet the man who put it all down on paper. Without further ado, let's ask Dr. Legarda to join us. <coughs> Dr. Legarda, uh, welcome to the show. Now, uh, briefly, for, yeah. at, at this point, um, let, let me ask you, how old were you at, 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 during the time of the during war? During the war, uh, I'm giving away my age. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> when the war broke out, I was 15. Okay. When it ended, I was 18. So, sir, Almost you 19. were 15 during the war. It means you were fully conscious of everything that yes, was happening. Yes. And Malolo did say earlier that to write about events or to speak about events during that war is very difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. Was it difficult for you? No, it was not uh, because... My family was fortunate in that we lived in Sampaloc, and Sampaloc was not worth fighting over. <laughs> so, so we, we escaped the, the, more, the more horrible uh, aspect of it. There had been a great, uh, a great uh, supply of imported goods. My father said we were preparing for the biggest Christmas in history, and the warehouses of the port area were full. Uh, but when the Americans evacuated Manila, they opened the warehouses to the public and said, help yourselves. And even Laurel, in his wartime memoir, memoirs, very interesting, he says that the Republic was lifeless, uh, lifeless and powerless, but we had to go through with it. Now, as, 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 as the occupation went on, um, how did it affect you as a young man? How did it affect your schooling, your, oh, your friends? Let, let me say one more thing about, mm. uh, about Lerel. It's true that it was lifeless and powerless, but the fact that it was a government supposedly recognized did give them a little more, a, a little more leeway to deal with the Japanese. And they well, were able going to, to your point, yeah. in, in a previous show, we, yeah. we discussed uh, things like that. We, we have a question from, yeah. from... Actually, sir, we have a question from Manfred here. I think it's particularly important. Um, sir, uh, Mr. Legarda, do you still feel any resentment towards the Japanese? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that, that does mean I don't have Japanese friends. That, that does not mean I don't go to, I, I don't enjoy the beauties of Kyoto. Kyoto is a beautiful city. Mm-hmm. But when I think of what they did to us, and they have never said they were sorry. I feel, sir, yeah. that there were other repercussions because I come from a generation that has trouble remembering or even envisioning martial law, much less a Japanese yeah. occupation. Do you feel that there was any other manifestation of the problems in the Japanese occupation to, let's say, today's generation? Manifestation? Any effects, sir? Things like loss of heritage. Santiago Pilar, who teaches at the UP, an art historian, he said that we lost most of our artistic heritage in the war. That you can never recover. You can rebuild a building, but how can you repaint a, 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 a classical painting or, or, or the libraries that were destroyed. The libraries that were destroyed, you know, documents that were also. But someone of their age who, who can't mem- rem- they have no memory of, mm-hmm. of Ed Sawan, mar- uh, much less uh, martial <laughs> law. Um, we were one year old Do babies, not view the Japanese through the same lenses as you do. Um, why should they read something like Actually, this? Actually, sir, I'd like to follow yeah. that up. Because you said earlier that you're capable of forgiveness, not forgetfulness. So to us, what should we not forget? What should we take away from what you've written and retain so that we can make some sense of it or some use for it in the future? You, you should not forget what they did to us. Pat, for being with us tonight and for your Thank questions. You, and to Dr. Legarda for sharing his time with us. And to our studio audience, a big round of applause for yourselves. Thanks for being with us. I'm Manolo Quezon. They explain it.